Hello everyone. So today's topic of discussion will be conservation of linear momentum. So until now we have looked at uh, Newton's laws of motion, uh, looked at concepts such as position, displacement, velocity, and we also looked at uh, Newton's laws with forces, where we applied the Newton's second law f equal to m a to solve uh, some problems. And um, these problems dealt with uh, trying to find the position of an object, its velocity, its acceleration at certain time t. Uh, then we moved on to uh, include the work and energy theorem and we uh, solved some problems in dynamics using uh, this principle. Uh, but uh, there is often a more convenient uh, approach that can be taken and that is the idea of momentum instead of using energy or force. Okay. So uh, later on, you will realize that it is just uh, using the Newton's laws in a different language. Okay, so let's understand what uh, is momentum. Uh, linear momentum of an object is defined as uh, its mass times its velocity. So it's uh, generally denoted by the letter p, and there is a vector uh, since this uh, momentum has direction, and uh, it is expressed as m times uh, this vector v. Okay. So in SI units, uh, the units are kilogram meter per second, or you can write it as Newton second. Okay. Now, uh, if an object is moving in three dimensions, then you can decompose the uh, momentum of the object in the three uh, components and write uh, the momentum in x direction, which will be just mv of x, which is the velocity in the x direction. And similarly, you can have the p of y and p of z components. Okay. So. The idea is that uh, how is the momentum of an object changing and this changes by the application of force. Okay, So uh, let's look at the Newton's second law. We know that the net force is given by the expression of m times a which is mass times acceleration and we can write uh, acceleration as change in velocity by change in time and if you consider that the mass is constant then uh, we can just take the mass uh, inside this argument and uh, then we have uh, change of mv divided by change in time and we know that m times v is the momentum okay so your net force comes out to be your change in momentum by change in time okay so this is a much more general statement of the newton's second law in which we are saying that the net force acting on an object is equal to the time rate of change of the object's momentum okay and it is much more general expression than just saying f is equal to ma okay because uh, if you consider uh, the motion for example in rockets you have the fuel that is burning so the mass is changing as well okay and uh, then your equation one is much more applicable to solve problems where uh, motion of rockets is considered Okay. So again, while solving problems, we can take the initial momentum of the object as P0 and it will be written in mv of 0 and you will have a final momentum uh, which is uh, P is equal to mv and suppose an object is changing its momentum from some initial state to the final state, then we can rewrite the equation of uh, your net force acting on the object as uh, mv minus mv0 divided by delta t. Okay, and from here, if you look at the expression, this just equals to m a. So both these f equal to m a and uh, f is equal to d p by d t. The these laws are uh, interchangeable. Okay, so let's look at an example so that we can better understand uh, the concept of momentum. So we have uh, a player who is uh, performing a tennis service, and uh, he is imparting some velocity in this uh, tennis ball and the velocity that is generated uh, is 55 meters per second. So you can assume that the initial velocity of the ball is zero as the player is performing the service and um, we can assume that the mass of the ball is about 60 grams. So the official uh, international federation value is a little bit less than that. So but for this example we can assume uh, the mass is 60 grams. And uh, let's say that the ball is in contact with the racket for about 4 milliseconds. Okay. So the question that we are asking is whether the average force that this ball is experiencing, will it be large enough to lift a person of weight of 60 kilograms? 
Okay, so let's see what we get. All right. So again, uh, for our uh, situation, we know the velocity uh, that uh, the server is generating, which is 55 meters per second. Initial velocity is zero. Okay, and uh, again, we'll apply this uh, new formulation of uh, Newton's second law. Okay, and uh, the new formulation says that the average force will be uh, this change in momentum by change in time. Okay, so delta p is uh, m v two minus v m v one. Okay, so uh, here the v one term will go to zero. So you are just left with m times v two, and uh, if you calculate that, you will get uh, the value for delta p. And um, again, uh, you divide it by zero point zero zero four. Remember, this is four milliseconds. Okay, and so you will get a value of eight uh, twenty five newtons. Okay. And uh, to compare it to a person who's uh, just standing on the surface of the Earth, the force acting on the person is m times g, which is just 588 newtons. Okay. So if you can transfer the entire uh, average force that a serve is generating onto a person, then it's it will be enough to actually lift the person off the ground. Okay. So that is very interesting to see. All right. So um, let's talk about a very uh, important. Uh, Topic uh, that will uh, uh, be using uh, throughout uh, physics in a uh, lot of different applications. Okay, and that is the idea of conservation of linear momentum. Okay. Uh, later on, you'll realize that it is just a different way of formulating the Newton's laws of motion. Okay. So uh, consider. Uh, there is an isolated system. We had talked about uh, this, uh, how we will consider a system and the particles inside the system to be part of the system. And uh, we have defined this red uh, boundary. Uh, and uh, these two particles, M1 and M2, are within this uh, boundary. So they are within the system. Okay. Now, this uh, mass M1 is moving with certain velocity. Okay. We can call it velocity V1. And uh, let's take this mass m2 that is moving with certain velocity v2. Okay. Now, uh, since we have isolated this system, there are only uh, two forces acting on the system. One is the force that is exerted by mass m1 on uh, m2, and the other force is the uh, force exerted by m2 on m1. Okay. So uh, let's say m1 mass it feels a force. F21 that is exerted on it by M2. Okay, so F21 means the force exerted by two on one. Okay, and similarly uh, we can assume that, that let's say there is a force F12 acting on the second particle that is exerted on it by M1. Okay, so again remember uh, any interaction that is going on between these particles. Okay, uh, whether they are planets or whether they are atoms, right? These, these, this interaction will result in uh, exchange of forces, and we know from Newton's third law that whatever force one object is exerting on the other, the equal and opposite force has to be exerted by the second object on the first one. Okay? So, or you can think that the combined forces, the sum of the two forces, will be equal to zero. Okay. And remember, uh, in whatever this situation is, whether these particles are colliding or whether they are just coming close together, uh, you know, whether the force is gravitational force or electric force, that is uh, much more general. We are not uh, really specifying it. Okay, so it can be either of those cases. Okay, so they don't have to touch to exert this interaction between the two particles. Okay, remember, gravitational force acts at a distance. Okay, e electric force it acts at a distance. Okay, when you're considering collision. Even in terms of collision, you don't have to assume that the particles are uh, uh, actually physically touching each other. Okay, so just by our formulation of Newton's second law, we know that uh, force acting on two, uh, force acting because of the second particle on one, which is F two one, will be equal to m one times the acceleration that this particle is experiencing. Okay, m one a one, and force uh, uh, acting Uh, due to one on two, which is on this particle, which be m two times a two. Okay, so just by uh, substituting it in this equation one, we can write as m one a one plus m two a two is equal to zero. 
okay now remember in this situation we have taken isolated masses and we have considered that both have some velocity okay so both have some momentum all right so if you look at this case we already know that acceleration is this change in velocity by change in time okay so you can rewrite this equation 4 as m1 delta v1 by delta t plus m2 delta v2 by delta t okay and again we can consider that the mass is not getting affected it is necessarily constant for the for the particles and then this m1 can go inside the equation and uh, you can take the derivative outside okay and you can write that the delta of m1 v1 plus m2 v2 divided by delta of t is equal to 0 okay which is the change of m1 v1 plus m2 v2 with respect to time is equal to 0 okay and what that means is that this quantity has to be a constant value okay it can be any value as long as it is a constant value okay and uh, it is not changing with time okay and remember this is a vector equation okay so ideally we should be writing it as m1 v1 plus m2 v2 will be constant okay because remember in terms of when uh, suppose these two are colliding then they can go in opposite directions so then this velocity is one of them will have negative sign okay just by convention that you will be using in problems okay so this statement which we have just figured out if you are keeping isolated system and you are considering the interaction between some particles we get that the m1 v1 plus m2 v2 for the case of just two a uh, moving mass is constant okay that means the momentum of one plus momentum of two is constant or you can just say that the total momenta is constant okay that it's always the same for all time okay and that essentially is your uh, statement for your conservation of momentum okay so again this p1 plus p2 is now the total momentum of this uh, internal system because we have just considered two uh, masses to be part of this system right and when we say it is constant what we mean is whatever is the uh, initial momentum of one plus initial momentum of the second particle will be equal to the uh, final momentum of the first particle plus final momentum of the second particle Okay, that is what it means right remember it is a constant value and not zero okay. so you have to be careful uh, when you consider this okay now the same situation we can generalize and we can consider that uh, you know you have a system uh, which has a lot of particles so you can define now a system something like this okay and uh, let's have a well defined boundary okay, of the system and uh, we can say let's uh, not take just one particle let's put a lot of different particles in this system okay so let me uh, give them a different color okay so you have one particle is here some are here okay there are a lot of particles that are part of the system now okay now um, all these particles internally they are exerting some um, forces on each other okay so suppose there is this particle here okay now this particle might be uh, feeling some force because of this particle in this direction okay and uh, because of this particle in this direction and eventually it will have some net force pointing in certain direction okay so that's for certain particle here similarly this particle here you know it can have some force uh, because of this particle it can have some force because of this particle and you can consider that you know maybe the net force for this particle will be somewhere here okay so that is the net force on the second particle okay so if you consider and uh, think about what is the total momentum of such a system okay that will just be the uh, sum of all the momentums of all the particles okay just like we had seen before so you have p1 plus p2 plus number 3 we can call this particle level 1 level 2 3 4 5 and all and so let's say we have uh, until i particles okay so we have so many particles and if you add all the momentums you will get the total momentum 
okay now just by uh, taking the derivative if i take the d by dt of this total momentum we can just write it as uh, the change in uh, momentum for the first particle and uh, change in momentum of the second particle and so on and so it will be dt r by dt now remember this from our uh, reformulation of the newton second law this is just the net force on one and this is just the net force on two and so on and so forth so that will be the net force on the ith particle okay and this will be the force that is uh, the total force that is acting on the system okay now remember this is all internal to the system okay so the total force on the system will be some force which is internal okay and you can also have a situation in which there are external forces right maybe there are some forces outside this system that might be acting we don't know okay so those are external forces okay so if i consider the total external force to be zero then what do i get i get that the d p total by dt will be zero okay why because all these internal forces right in the system they will cancel each other out okay okay because if there is some force pointing in this direction then you can imagine that you know there will be some force pointing in this direction similarly to counteract a force acting on some particle in this direction there will be some force acting in this direction so the net forces of all the internal forces will be zero so you are only left with external forces as part of the system and if the external force is also zero then you can say that this total force will be zero or the change in your momentum with over time will be zero or you can say that this uh, momentum is conserved that means it is not changing so any momentum which has a fixed value if you take the derivative that will come out to be zero okay so this is a much more general situation now that you think of okay so we just showed the case for two particles but now you can generalize this situation and think of uh, you know whether if you have a system and a system you can define your system you can take as many particles uh, to be a part of that system and uh, there will be some internal forces that will be developing because of the forces uh, or interaction between the particles and there will be some external forces acting from outside uh, into the system okay so our condition for conservation of linear momentum will be a much more generalized statement and the generalized statement will say that the total linear momentum okay of a system is conserved when the net external force acting on it is zero and uh, again uh, when we are writing it we just say that the total force ex external which is dp by dt okay this has to be zero and then the change will be zero that means your momentum is constant okay or it is time independent value okay this particle will change its momentum only when there is a force acting on it you see the statement should sound familiar to you from the newton's laws right so the particle will keep doing its motion right it will change its momentum only when there is a external force acting on this uh, particle that will cause the momentum to change okay again let's take a very simple example two balls they are colliding and uh, they come in contact and uh, they have some initial velocities and they have some final velocities okay now uh, from our uh, conservation of momentum equation what we mean is whatever is the initial velocity of this uh, yellow ball which is v uh, one i and the velocity of this uh, red ball which is v two i right so uh, those will go on the left hand side of the equation so that will be part of your initial momentum and uh, we need the final velocities which is v1f and v2f of this yellow and red balls and they will go on the second side of the equation and that is your final total velocity okay so that's how you write the equation okay and by using this equation you can solve a uh, lot of problems that uh, will be handy okay uh, again uh, we can uh, take an example uh, let's consider this collision and let's consider elastic collision 
and we'll be talking about later about uh, what this collision means uh, elastic and inelastic but uh, we have to just understand right now that the uh, the idea here is that the momentum will be conserved okay so there is one railway car here it is moving with some initial velocity 24 meters per second and the second car is stationary okay and uh, you have the mass of each car is 10000 kilograms okay so uh, all we have to do now is using the conservation of momentum equation we want to find what will be the velocity uh, of these two cars when they collide and then they start moving together okay so try using the equation of your uh, conservation of momentum and try to find the value of the final velocity of which will be common for both these cars okay velocity for the second card is uh, zero because it is just stationary so this term will go to zero so v of f will be just m1 uh, v1 initial divided by m1 plus m2 okay and uh, if you try to solve that uh, you will get uh, 24 divided by 2 and that will be 12 meters per second okay so that's a very very simple example uh, with uh, what this uh, conservation of momentum can do okay uh, what we saw earlier in our case where we tried to find uh, the uh, force exerted uh, on the object uh, which was a tennis ball uh, by the player while he is serving uh, if you noticed uh, here we applied the delta t value of time as very very small value right 4 milliseconds now imagine if we could cut down this time to 2 milliseconds right and if you do that you will uh, see that this force value will almost be doubled right so as the time and time gets shorter your average force value can increase right so from here we can develop the idea of what an impulse is okay so from a relationship of f is equal to ma we can rewrite it as m delta v by delta t Okay, that is what acceleration is, okay. and this is nothing but your v final minus v initial by delta t. Okay, so we can rewrite this equation, take delta t on the other side, and write it as the average force times delta t is nothing but uh, m v f minus m v i. Okay, that is the change in your momentum. Okay, so this quantity f times delta t is known as the impulse. and it is uh, equal to your change in momentum okay so uh, simply stating forward impulse of a force that is um, acting on a particle um, is equal to the change in momentum of the particle okay and that is another way of stating this uh, newton's second law okay and um, Uh, if you remember our discussion before you know uh, in the realistic situations uh, we don't uh, always have constant force acting on a system right so the force can vary and uh, to overcome that uh, aspect what we do is we take average forces and we consider some time interval okay so uh, using this impulse theorem it is a much more uh, generalized way of uh, of solving problems where you can look at uh, Uh, how the uh, momentum of an object is changing over uh, a certain time interval okay because uh, we just realized from our example before also that the time interval matters okay and that can really uh, drastically change your value of your uh, impulse that you are imparting on a, on an object okay